sign up and try again. Okay, welcome back. We're going to create a new file called write file example. The purpose of this video is to show you how to write a file using Java in different formats. As a matter of fact, we're going to write with a TXT. We're going to start with the TXT. We're going to change a couple of formats so you can uh, learn how to basically use print writer as a way to write files in Dr. Java, in Java in general. Again, I'm not using Dr. Java or IntelliJ. I'm using the Visual Studio Code. This allows me to have the code part up here and also allows me to basically provide me a terminal which I can compile the Java code and then run it directly. This particular example we're going to write a file so I create a folder in my desktop called files. If you can see this files is part of the folder where we're going to set all the files where we're going to create all the files using write file example. You can see that write file example it's under directory of files and write file example is the code that we're going to do today. The very first thing is to incorporate the proper libraries. We're going to use again um, import java.util. Yeah, we're going to import everything that comes there this time. I'm going to use the wildcard specifying that everything that will be part there. Um, another library that we're going to use is java.io input output. As you probably remember in other examples. Uh, input output will allow us to basically interact with the user. Um, not to introduce it, I'm sorry, to the input and output devices. In this case, will be to write a file. I put here in the outline, I'm going to change here scanner. I, I meant to write a scanner, but we're going to use now those two libraries. So, a friendly reminder the wildcard specifies everything that is in the library util. That will tell you, give me everything that is there. Um, in previous code, we talk about the throws IO exception that goes in the main after the main parameters. I'm not going to use that today so you can see the potential error that we're going to have. So for now, we're just going to write the code. <clears throat> Suppose that we're going to write a code called output.txt. So output.txt is the name of the file that we're gonna that we're gonna create and for that we need to create an object file. Yeah output whose new file and as inside of the file we're gonna use the string output.txt specifying this is the file we're gonna create in the directory that are is right now write file example.java. In our words, we're expecting in the directory of files the name output.txt that will show up there later on. Now we need the handler for that. For handler for that, we're going to use something called print writer. Yeah, I'm going to call PR equals new print writer. And uh, the nice thing about the Visual Base, uh, the Visual Studio thing is that they provide you some potential input that you need here. Print Writer requires a file object. I'm going to call file, which indeed we just created in the line before line number five. We create output. So here we're expecting output. So I'm going to call here output as the name of the file that we're going to create. There's a shortcut for that. In previous videos, we saw that we create the instance of object, the file, inside of the parentheses of print writer or scanner. Here I decide to create two lines separately so you can see where exactly that came from. So the next thing that we're going to do, print writer now handles the object that we're going to create this, this as part of the file. So PR, which is the print writer, we can do something like print. Let me see if there's print line. 
you can see print line is similar like system that I'll print line but the print ln basically comes from the PR which is a print writer that we have here and here we can specify what exactly you want to print for example hello guys so PR print line will be the method that will print hello guys in the file called alpo.txt okay so we're ready to run this program now notice that when we try to when we'll try to run this program remember that I told you before that I did not specify after the main the exception the IO exception and this is because I want to demonstrate how Java will complain because we didn't specify anything regarding the comp the the, com the, ex the existence of a file or not a, not a file existence I'm going to compile Java C. The name of the file is called writefileexample.java. And notice when I hit enter, when I try to compile, Java complains with a message that says unreported exceptions file not found must be caught or declared to be thrown. Eventually, we're going to talk about more exception handling, but this part, Java identified that print writer uses something called output. And output is a file. So if you notice a file, every time you deal with file, Java will expect to either read write or actually stream in something from that file and there's a potential exception that might occur what, is, what does that mean it means that the file might not be there maybe you can maybe the file is there but it's not being closed the file has been corrupt many other processors are using the file there's a there's a different types of exceptions that eventually will be caught in order to handle that situation, we need to use the throws IOE exception. Remember that thing from previous videos. So basically, it says here that there's a potential exception that may or may not happen, but it might happen. And don't worry, Java will handle it properly. It's called IO exception. There is a hierarchy of different exceptions that we can talk about that later on. But right now, this will be enough for um java if i save this guy um if i save this guy and i try to compile again you can compile that program without any problem notice that i created a class file right here to my right hand side and when i try to run java write example it will appear a the file to my right hand side called output.txt check this out so output.txt was created as we specified however if i try to open if i open this file notice there's nothing here we were expecting we were expecting the string hello guys here and there's nothing here we actually could figure that out since the very beginning because there's zero bytes yeah so there's nothing there so what happened this is the next question Every time you deal with print writer, you need to make sure after you're done writing into your file, you need to close your file. It's very important because that will specify to the program that you're done writing it. And once you're done writing it, uh, you can say you're ready to use it to read what we just wrote. So let's let's compile this again. I'm gonna clear the, the terminal here. Java C, write example, Java, write example. And I just wrote it again. Notice that now it's 12 bytes. So when I open this file, if you notice, there is a hello guys, what we're expecting. So this string now is being written into output.txt file by using this file. Uh, doesn't have to be output.txt only. We can do a couple other things. For example, you can could DOCX for document. Yeah, and if I try to compile this program again, and if I run it, it will create a Java document, like output.docx, and it will try to open it. Of course, I don't have the software here. Let me see what happened. Um, yeah, so probably in, in Mac, they have a couple of other issues, but if you don't like doc.exe, we can put HTML. And if you don't know what HTML is, it's basically the output that um, you can open here in, in, in Chrome or something else. So 
here you can create a local file called upload.txt with hello guys you can be a little bit more creative if you want to be let me see um let me see i guess you can put here html you can close the html also and you can put here paragraph close the paragraph and then even header one If you know HTML, that would be great. If not, don't worry. You don't have to know HTML. We're just gonna run this thing again. We're just gonna refresh this guy. Notice that there's some variations. Here is a header. This is some text like that. So that's how you create a, a file using the print writer. And there is another variation of this probably i'm gonna write a different example i'm just gonna create a new document here example 02 i'm very lazy i'm just gonna leave this output well actually you know what i'm gonna create here numbers that txt numbers txt it will generate a couple of numbers in in the file print writer now um, you can we can still use print writer and print line and you can print here a number for example X so what is X X can be X can be a number yeah and of course you can put whatever number you want here 24 224 whatever you want but what we can do also we can we can actually use a library called math.random. Now, math.random will give you a random number between 0 and 1. That is a lot of numbers. And between 0 and 1 is a lot of um, double numbers. And when we're trying to do that thing, um, this will generate a double number. And we want a whole number, an int. So we can, if you remember, we can force Java to force, to give us a number. Yeah, we type cast that. Now, since this is our number between zero and one, and we're trying to force it using int, it's gonna give us zero always, because it's gonna truncate down to the lowest bound, so it reaches zero. So if we want to extend this value, we can multiply time that we can extend it a little bit more further. For example, 11. So math at random will generate a uniform distributed number between zero and one, not inclusive one. And by multiplying by 11, it will guarantee you a number between zero and 11, not inclusive. Since we want to include a number between say 0 and 10 inclusive both of them we have to go one more step that number that we generate we're gonna truncate it to an int because this guy will give us a double so we need to have a whole number so we're gonna do that thing I'm gonna try to to do both examples so here is where I found example 02 actually O2. The file that we create probably is here numbers. And if you notice, there is the number seven. It's a random number between zero and 10. Let me see if I can do something here. Mm. 
Okay, so math.random will generate the number between 0 and 10. Suppose that we want to write 10 numbers or 5 numbers into the file uh, PR. What we can do, again, we can create, for example, this can be x1 and then int x2, basically that part. Again, I'm going to use the power of the copy and paste just to do int x3 three numbers. And I know, I know you probably know already where I'm going with this. If I create 10 different values, I wish I can know how to print <laughs> to type int. So if I do this part and I print x1, x2, s3, s4, s5, I'm going to generate five different numbers. And you know what? I don't mind doing it right now here, just for the sake of um, of understanding what we're doing here. Two, three, four, four, and five. I don't know where I print an extra one. So if I compile this again, I'm gonna save this guy. I'm gonna compile this guy again, and I'm gonna run it again. What? Here. Sorry. If you notice here, numbers, now we generate numbers that takes, it has five different random numbers. If I run this guy again, those numbers change. You know what? You can see the screen here on, on um, the preview that we have here under numbers. Notice how they're going to keep changing those five numbers. Okay, so that's enough. So five of them, they're fine. But suppose that you want to generate maybe 10 or 100 or 1,000. Obviously, this repetition, it won't work again. So what we can do, we can just use the power of loops to basically avoid all that repetitions. I'm just going to put here X. So basically, we can say something to Java like this. Hey, I want to generate... I want to counter from zero as long as we don't hit 10, one by one. And in the meanwhile, what we can do, we can actually create a, a number, print the number. And then after that, after we're doing that, just close it. So here we reduce the whole number. Let me just compile this again and then run it again. And if you notice, did it compile? Or is it I create 10 random numbers here? If you don't like hun uh, 10, you can put here 100 or 1000 if you want to. It doesn't really matter what this, what it's going to matter is that is going to generate a lot of numbers here to 1000 to be more specific. So there's 1000 numbers between 0 and 10, not inclusive. Uh, you can count at home if you want to. Good luck. What we can do here, but this program is basically what generates is random numbers between 0 and 10. And then using a loop, we'll do 1000 of them. I'm going to post this on the website just for your information. And let me know if you have any questions.